So welcome back to another episode of Off The Cuff. Uh, today our guest um, has been in Japan for 30 years. She used to be a successful TV presenter here and was a model. Unfortunately, she became a rape victim about 20 years ago, 18 years ago. And since then, she has become an award-winning human rights defender. We have Catherine Jane with us here today. Hi. Hi. Nice Welcome to see you today, Catherine. Thanks Hi. for coming in. Thank you. Great. So, yeah, I just wanted to start off the maybe with a discussion of the events, um, the, the, you know, back in 18 years ago in Okinawa, how it happened, um, and especially the aftermath. Um, if you can just talk us a little bit about this and... Um, most importantly is also the police. How did they handle the situation? Um, if you can just touch upon that for us, please. Okay, great. So um, I've been here for almost 40 years, I think. It's been here since the 1980s. And uh, the so crime uh, actually mm -hmm. happened in Tokyo, mm -hmm. in Japan, mm -hmm. not in Okinawa. Sure. Uh, but Okinawa, where a lot of the crimes actually did happen, the US military crimes did happen there. Mm -hmm. So... Um, you know, when I was raped in 2002, mm -hmm. you know, after living here in Japan for such a long time, you know, my first thought was go to the Japanese police. Mm -hmm. You know, they're very respectful people and they're going to help me. And actually, I thought that was my biggest mistake because when I went to the Japanese police, they treated me like a criminal, mm -hmm. literally mm -hmm. like a criminal. Um, they just mocked me. Um, I, I said I just wanted to report the crime and obviously go straight away to get medical treatment. Mm -hmm. um, but they told me that if I was hurt, that they th that I had to show them where. And a rape victim, what are they supposed? What is what is a rape victim supposed to do? How are you yeah. supposed to mm -hmm. show people where you've been raped? I mean, that's. And that's that's ridiculous. not the first thing on your mind. No, I mean, yeah. you, you can't just take off your clothes and show a person. Yeah. Um, and so they denied me medical, immediate medical treatment. Um, I didn't have any underwear on. They didn't give me replacement underwear. And they mm. told me that um, I had to be forced to go with them to look for the rapist by myself. And uh, after that, they made me uh, do reenactment of the crime. Mm. I had to go straight, this is right after I'd been raped, to go back to the place where I'd been raped, which yeah. I did not want to go back there, mm -hmm, and to uh, take photos of me pointing my finger at the place where I'd been raped. I don't know why they had to, to do this. There is, there so is there was no support handed over whatsoever? No, they just wanted, they were just they fixated just wanted, on... fixated on going back to the place. Then they started getting out tape measures and measuring the crime scene and and didn't care about me whatsoever. Yeah, no emotional and, support, psychological support. Um, you know, usually a policeman would say, don't worry, you're in good hands now. We're going to take care of it. What, what is it that we can do for you? Mm -hmm. But in Japan, um, 2002, that was not the case. Mm -hmm. uh, so in the end, they kept me, I would say, kept me hostage in custody because mm -hmm. I was not allowed to leave. Mm -hmm. uh, for about 13, 13 hours in total. Mm -hmm. um, in the end, they let me go to the hospital. That was the following day. Mm -hmm. And I still didn't get to go home. I think I arrived home probably late in the afternoon the next day. Oh. And I, they still didn't give me replacement underwear to go home in. So oh. I went home by myself without underwear on. Hmm. Um, did, did it seem like they didn't know what they were doing or they just didn't care much? They did it on purpose. And I just remember because, you know, I have PTSD, I can actually mm. vision myself sure. doing that, you mm. know, the whole situation right now. I remember I'm like in my van, I'm trying to get home after being raped, okay? And the, the station, the radio is not even on any station. It's just playing static. And I yeah. think the, the static was that, that sound. Yeah. was something that stayed with me for a long time and that's how I could sort of like you could, I, I think that's how my life yeah. was yeah. it was just playing this this noise that didn't really yeah. make any sense anymore you know the people that I really trusted that I went to for help were actually treated me like a criminal so mm -hmm. um, my injuries actually took quite a, a long time to heal yeah. as well so 
so so I think you discussed this in um, in the book um, that uh, the first book mm. that you wrote and that you were published on. I think we we have it here. Um, yeah. So if, I don't know if you want to show this, it. This one, this yeah. one here. This no. is the first oh, no, one. That was the, the first, first one. one. Oh, okay, this okay. is the first okay. one. Okay. Um, this is called Juno Tabira, which mm. means the door to freedom. Okay. And it means live your life from today. Mm -hmm. This is. I would just like to tell you the reason why I made this story, mm -hmm. is because in two thousand and eight, when I broke the science in front of about. I think it was over 6,000 people in the mm. pouring rain, mm -hmm. okay? And um, this was for a, another rape victim who uh, was raped in Okinawa. And when I stood from the podium, because I was on the stage mm -hmm. at that time, sure. and I stood down from the podium, and this uh, Okinawa woman held her hand out to me, and she said, thank you so much. And I said, why? And she said, because you were up on the stage saying, mm. it's not my fault, and mm. she said, I was actually a rape victim 50 years ago and I'm going to live my life wow. from today. Wow. I'm going to live my life from today. Wow. So I actually wrote this book for her, this title, and it says live your life from today because I don't know her name. Do you know Tobida? The Daughter Freedom mm -hmm. and Live Your Life From mm -hmm. Today. And mm -hmm. so, and you can see on the cover here, this is another woman who was murdered, uh, sorry, excuse me, who was raped by yeah. Yeah. her father when she was six years old okay. continuously oh, for exactly. many many years so a lot of yeah. um women have been breaking the silence since then well you've uncovered a lot of cases right but, but yeah. before we go to that i want to go back to you know you know the aftermath of the event because you 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 won the case and that's the key thing right this wasn't left open you you chased this this guy well, well, to the America, and you, you you know you went on with, it and it took twelve years to close the case, right? Right. So, for example, at, for the criminal case, mm. um, due to a secret agreement that they have here in Japan, okay. yeah. between, um, who? Uh, between the United States military and the Japanese government, okay. um, which states that you know the Japanese government has the jurisdiction mm. to take cases which they feel are of material importance okay. and it's inside my book in here. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Yep. yeah, please go ahead. Uh, so uh, inside there I have the secret agreement that is there. And so of obviously my case to them I was not of material importance mm -hmm. to them. Mm -hmm. So during my court case in the Tokyo District Court, uh, the rapist fled the country and mm. I couldn't find him. Mm. So I said to the the Japanese government, I had a meeting with them and said, you know, this man has fled the country, what are we supposed to do? And they said, we can't do anything. I kept on going on and I, I won that court case in Japan, went back to the Japanese government and said to them, you know, um, you need to bring him back. I've Your courts in Japan, I've won this case. And then that, what comes into play next is the Status of Forces Agreement, which is agreement between Japan and America. Okay. okay? Mm -hmm. And that agreement, there's many different articles in there. And one article in particular, which was thrown in my face, was Article 16, which says that uh, the US military personnel and their families, mm -hmm. their components, um, have to respect the laws of Japan. And I said, see, but they haven't respected the laws of Japan. Of course, yeah. And they said, you see, but it only says respect. And mm. I said, but you have to change it to obey then. Yeah. You know, so for almost two decades now, I've been trying to change this law, wow. to try and change Article 16 of the Status Sources Agreement, to, to change, change one word mm. from respect the laws of Japan to obey, the, obey laws the laws of Japan. Laws. Yeah, exactly. so, so you can imagine, because of that clause, Article 16, the secret clauses, the secret right, contract, that clause, mm. I mm. had to look for the rapist by myself. Mm, no. And that took me. What happened to him? He, 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 well, he fled the country. Um, was sent back. Was sent back with an honourable discharge. Honourable discharge. So he served this country well, basically, right? Well, that's what they're saying. Mm -hmm. But um, so then he was sent back to the United States, mm -hmm. and so I was. I looked for him for about ten years, and I almost gave up. You know, and this is this caused a lot of stress to my family. Mm -hmm. um, at that point, um, I'd lost my house three times through. I, I did seven different kinds of sort court cases mm -hmm. during that time. Um, I lost my house about three times and this is the next time I was losing, I'd lost my house, a place to live and and um, my mother, she said to me, because my mom was living with me too from Australia, mm -hmm. and she said she had just 
just terrible pains in her stomach and she said you've got to take me we just moved into the new house and she said she didn't want to get an ambulance to wake the neighbors so i took her by taxi and her intestines had burst so they had to cut out my mother's intestines and this is the thing which is really difficult for me because i never want to just hurt her and her parents like course, this, yeah. this oh, yeah. that's the for me, I mean, I've kind of like gone over it, but for my mom, it's just so of course, yeah. horrifying. But the thing is, they had to take out her intestines and the bottom part, the bottom part of her intestines and gave her a stoma. And I remember looking at my mom in the hospital and just feeling like, you know, if I hadn't have kept on looking for him for 10 years, mm. then my mom wouldn't have had so much stress. So um, then we take her out of the hospital. She's got this stoma. Mm. And then the stoma starts to close. So mm. that meant the doctor said, I had to put my finger into my mother's intestines for 10 minutes every day. Can you imagine how much mm. I just was like so angry with the Japanese government yeah. and the American military for all the stress that they'd caused yeah, for sure, my family? Course, yeah. um, the good thing is that they had to bring my mom back in for an operation mm. and mm. she was actually... Um, she recovered. She recovered she and she's fine now. And they stretched her intestines, doesn't have a stoma, and she's back in Australia. Amazing. But these, this kind of case, for example, even like my ex-husband, he tried to kill himself, tried to commit suicide mm. uh, from what happened. And so it's, it's a ripple effect. It doesn't mm, just affect course. the victim. Yeah. It affects the victim's family, mm. society. And um, so, you know, that's where when I said to the Japanese government, you need to help me, and they said, no. Mm. can't do anything mm. so when someone says to me well we can't do anything then that meant i had to do it by myself yeah so i had to look for him by myself for over 10 years mm. found him he had he was actually in prison for um uh, padlocking his own children in their own urine and feces <laughs> in his house Jeez. and a psycho and had actually um like raped the, the the woman that he was with, with the, as she quoted with the, the, with a shotgun sometimes. Oh my god! Oh bloody hell! So uh, it's quite horrific. So they, they see what's happening is they they were letting they're letting these United States military servicemen back into the United States. Mm, mm. So I mean, he's, he's mentally not there, right? This okay, but this is not an isolated case. We're course, talking yeah. like um, in 1995. Mm when uh, the young girl was raped in Okinawa, yeah. there were three guys that gang raped her. And one of the guys, his name was Thomas Leddit. They, they, after they let him out of the prison, mm. then it's let them back to the United States. Do they have background, these background checks or have, you know, these criminal records? Mm. I do not know, I don't think so. Because w what Thomas Leddit went ahead to do was um, rape another university student, then he murdered her and then he committed suicide. You know, it's so it's exactly. So then, it's, and it's continues. And they release these guys on honorable discharges, yeah, which is okay, well, right. Honorable discharges, honorable yeah, discharges yeah. to these people. Mm -hmm. So, um, so there's no background checks before setting them back into society. Nothing to. Well, not background checks, but criminal, uh, criminal, uh, criminal ch charge. Um, um, sorry, checks, yeah. criminal okay. checks. They just put them back. So, but mm -hmm. you see, when I was raped by United States military. I thought that I was the first woman who had actually been a victim mm -hmm. because it was never in the papers. Mm -hmm. There was no, nothing about that. And yeah. so that's when I, I found, um, you know, all of this data, yeah. which... We'll, we'll show later. I think yeah, we'll so, but just, just have a look, look sure. at it here. So you can see here, this is the, the crimes against women and men and children yeah. in Okinawa. So it's so a post-war US military crime against so women So we're talking like Okinawa. since yeah. 1945. Yeah. Yeah. Can I just show it sure, a little bit yeah. here? Yeah. So, I mean, if we just see, this is... We'll have to put a tour off that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, this is, this is, these are the crimes that we're talking about. Yeah. Now, I was not... So, so could you could you just basically other. just give uh, just at yeah, any point just give one? Okay, well I could give you just many read. examples like six month year old babies. Um, the um, men Brilliant. actually were have been raped as well, but this one here I think which really stands out a lot and it's a really famous case in Okinawa 
is in 1955, um, a six-year-old girl, her name was Yumiko because we know her name. No. She was uh, abducted, raped, mutilated, and then thrown into the trash. Oh. And so, but then just like, uh, like a week later, another a nine-year-old girl. Um, and these are cases committed by the United States military United service, 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 service in Okinawa. Station oh, there. Wow. And it's just so, just going on and on and on. And, uh, and then... Um, Sorry, we'll have to pin up So we'll just keep we'll it down there. Okay. Okay. So, okay. so when I... Then I knew about all of this. And so mm. when I started looking for the, the man who raped me by myself because the Japanese government, you know, couldn't even afford a postage stamp mm. to send a letter to the, you know, the U.S. The, the US. Um, that just it's caused so much trauma. But so yeah. then I found out that through my, uh, I actually got some a mm. lawyer, a legal team in the United States. And, uh, and they were willing to cooperate. They, right? they, they, the case cost them $200,000. Yeah. It was pro bono work. Pro bono, pro bono, $200,000. And like a year into the, the, um, I'm sorry, I don't remember what it was, but okay. the, the, they just gave me a call and said, you know, he has, the rapist has just handed in a document to the judge mm -hmm. that um, the United States military sent him out of Japan during your court case. Mm. So then I knew that I had them there. Mm. And so I... So they were trying to protect this guy, Yeah, basically. they were trying to like, you know, they're yeah. actually harboring a rapist. And, if mm. by, and as I just mentioned, other cases and his own case, if you send a rapist back into another country, yeah. they are still going to commit crimes when they get back there. Yeah. They don't suddenly become angels. Of course, yeah, as we, so as we've said, yeah. I was entitled mm. to a lot of money, but to I needed to win this case for all of these people. Yeah. So I said to my my legal team uh, from Perkins and Coy, amazing legal firm in the U.S. Mm -hmm. I said to them. Tell the judge that we're changing the whole ball game. Mm -hmm. Now that I know that he was sent out and I have the the missing piece to this mm -hmm. uh, puzzle, I really need to win this case. And the the way I can do it because he is such a terrible person that if I just say, look, I'll take a dollar if you admit to what you did, then if he agrees, then I'll just take the dollar. And mm -hmm. so. Of course, it was not a, that settlement. The judge still has to agree with that as well. Yeah. So we waited, and the answer came back, and, and I won the case. Nice. I won the case. And you won and the you, dollar too. Yeah. And the dollar. Here's the dollar, yeah. So, yeah. But the dollar was in a trust fund, yeah. actually. Yeah. Mm. This is not the dollar. The dollar was in a trust, trust fund. fund. Yeah, okay. And but that shows your integrity. Yes. This is what I mean, right? Yeah. If, if something like this happens, you're going to chase it to the end. It's not about the money. Right, it was never, it's never exactly. about the money. Of I mean, but... Yeah. Um, what woman has to fight this hard for justice? Yeah, 12 years. 12 years, course, seven, yeah. seven court cases. Mm. And, and I won not only in Japan, but I also won in the United States. Mm -hmm. And the, this is the first time that a, a case for rape had been, uh, that had been won in yeah. Japan mm. was endorsed in the United States yeah. that I know of. But so what has been then, you know, the, the consequences of all of this for you know, not only um, yourself, your family, but also the, the, all these rape mm. victims that uh, throughout the years you've been trying to help. What what, um, what has this me meant for them, um, the fact that you won this case, etc.? Could you tell us a bit more about this? Okay, so um, basically, you know, when we're talking about two decades ago, mm. the word rape can could never be used in Japan. There was so much stigma to that. And mm. so to even put the word rape in the newspaper was out of the question. Mm -hmm. But they were talking about me and they were just, you know, making it into some other word, you know, to make it sound not so bad. Mm -hmm. So I just called up to the down. the yeah, mm -hmm. called up to the mm -hmm. um, the the reporters and I said, You need to use the word. And they said, Do you give us permission? I said, Yeah, I give you permission to use the word rape. Mm -hmm. So they can't use the word without getting the permission of the uh, I think, or? you know, Japan they do try to respect people a lot, and they yeah. were trying to. Res I think they were trying to respect the the, the victim and the family. Mm -hmm. It's a traumatic word. Right, right? so it's yeah. a traumatic word for them, and mm. so that's why they did it. And I said, "Well, I'm I'm fine. 
um, that's what happened to me. So we can't give it any other name yeah. than what it was. Yeah, and so they said that was okay. And so that was the first time that that started. Mm. But um, when I started my advocacy as well, talking with you know university professor doctors and everybody else, and they couldn't use the word either mm. because they would lose their jobs. Mm. Um, and so they would say to me, well, we need you to go out there mm. and do this. And okay. so that got a lot of backlash to me too um, on the internet, you know, 20 years ago. Really? Yeah. Was, From, people yeah. would say, I'm going to come back and rape you again or... Um, that's nuts. Why? Because you were speaking up? Yeah, well, you know, just, just to say, you know, they're just like trolls. Mm. Yeah, internet mm. trolls. Yeah. yeah, and so... But that after people knew how serious I was, mm. you know, I didn't want any money. I just mm. wanted justice and things like that. Then I have won a lot of support from mm. not only uh, journalists, from but also from you know people all over the world. Yeah. So, um, but what could I say? That it's, yes, that's changed. The, but you won the case. It's amazing. I mean, won the case. It took a long time. It's right. Taking a lot of stress. And twelve all of or twelve years. Twelve years. Yeah. Then um, I started. You know, the one dollar yeah. case. Uh, Taylor Swift uh, followed after that when okay. really she did that. the one dollar case. Okay. Oh, really? Rape has happened since the beginning of well, while humans were here, right? I mean, since it's from the beginning. the beginning of time. So, exactly. Um, but you know, it's back in the light now because of the recent Me Too movements, right? I wanted to check what your uh, feeling was in that. You know, for me, seeing Me Too, I think it started off as a very honourable and effective, um, you know, way of delivering the message, perhaps, right? You know, rape victims, even people suffering mm -hmm. sexual abuse at work, uh, actors and actresses, which is work, right? But then it kind of descended down the ladder into uh, kind of bad dates and, you know, men looking at women funny and just using, and ruining people's lives, right? What are your thoughts on the Me Too? Well, that's pretty simple. I mean, people have different views on different things. Mm -hmm. What I think about a flower, whatever you think about a flower might be completely different. Sure. So the Me Too is, there's nothing different about that too. People have, it means different things to different people. So for me, I have not really touched the Me Too movement that much because, for example, one of the main faces of the, of the Me Too movement she was soon accused of being, uh, you know, a predator herself and mm -hmm. committing sexual assault against a 17-year-old boy, Asia Argento. Asia Argento, okay. okay right. So she and... Um, we'll look her, it up and put a, yeah, we'll right, put a link so, in the description. Um, later, like, her boyfriend was Anthony Bourdain. Okay. Mm. He committed uh, that suicide. Name, yeah, yeah. And um, she was the main accuser mm. of the Weinstein. Yeah. Um, movement okay, yeah, sure. but um but see what happened the the guy who was the young man who was 17 years at the time mm -hmm. he didn't want to come forward due to the ramifications that would probably happen mm -hmm. to him mm -hmm. but when she came forward he said that sort of like traumatized him mm -hmm. that she was saying you know that, that she was a victim but actually he was a victim and so and she was in fact a predator as well right? well allegedly that's yeah. what yeah. what is going on yeah. so but everybody has to understand that not only men but women are capable of committing of sexual yeah. assault it yeah. doesn't matter yeah. what gender the person mm. is so we can't have double standards here mm. sure so and you know as you as i told you you know I was just recently at the United Nations to mm. uh, at the Human Rights Council, and I was in one of the side events, which is the event that you can hear many of the United yes. Nations Women's Council and people like that who are giving some speeches there. Mm -hmm. And one of the women on the council said that she started a, or she was using a hashtag, mm. um, men are trash. Mm. And for me, I was really upset about that. It's not just I'm once. really yeah. upset. Yeah. Because, I mean, men and women commit crimes. Of and course. it's not just, mm. it's not only men. Mm. Um, and I'm not, I'm not aware of the percentage, but I mean, both genders commit this kind of crime. Mm -hmm. I mean, there was this um, 
I guess this reaction as well on behalf of many of the men. Some of the men actually in Hollywood after the Me Too movement came mm. out with uh, their Terry own hashtag Cruz. as well. Terry Crews, for mm. example, with the hashtag, the guy, right? yeah, hashtag Me Too. But there was also other men who came out with another hashtag, which was hashtag um, not all men, mm. right? Meaning that it's not, you know, it's not every single man that has, uh, uh, you know, this... That that also are, are, are predators and mm. uh, that do these um, sexual um, you know things in at the workplace etc. So, um, so yeah, it's it's a, men it's a men good were point. In fear, yeah. right? Men in power were in fear to be alone yeah. in, in an elevator in the same room. Yeah. Of course, naturally, it's a scary thing. Right? But so do you remember how Terry Crews was ostracized for for After speaking out? out of, yeah, I remember. Yeah, by that. rappers, they were exactly. They were, they were people were making him. fun of him. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah. Mm. So I mean, there's a lot of stigma as well when it. When it's the other way as well, when it's men as well who are also victims of mm. uh, sexual abuse, and mm. so it makes it hard for them to come out of it. So it's a good point you touch upon. Sure. But right. so, what is then your um, perspective on this? What's the best way to to move forward? If Me Too, um, you know, is also maybe too strong sometimes and uh, doesn't really address the problem, um, what sort of hashtag would be the best hashtag? If because we live in this age of hashtags, right? Uh, where things get picked up very quickly by um, mm. on the internet and on Twitter. So, what would be the best way to um, to, to raise awareness and you know cause people to uh, to take attention to the issue and change the things? Um, okay. Especially. So, the United Nations hashtag that I heard that the woman had used was "men are trash," mm -hmm. and uh, that was is definitely not right for, because I would have to honestly say that. For me to be able to come this far to, like even my um, editor, it's a, a male, uh, he, it was so many people, so for this, my Japanese book as well, I have two Japanese books, but so many strong men have helped me. And uh, yeah, of course, mm. they, I mean, my sons, my father, and so many great, great mm. men have been, um, a part of my healing, a part of supporting me and doing so many great things to help. So I really want to start a new campaign to help men mm. because there are men out there who are victims themselves okay. and it would be even more difficult for them in Japan to come out and break the silence as mm. well and say that I have been a victim. So you, um, you, you helped somebody, if I remember, when I was yes. at one of your press conferences before, I met a guy there and you told me yeah, he was a he was a male and he was accused of rape and exactly. you helped him to be acquitted of the charges mm. right it was in the paper that he had been arrested on charges of uh, of rape mm -hmm. and he actually contacted me he was actually himself a former US military service he was US military as well yes. okay well. so um, people my organization for anybody who is innocent mm. we are going to help mm -hmm. them mm -hmm. It's great matter. because you didn't right. care. You're not. No. You're not it's attaching your emotions to this, right? I mean, right. of course, naturally, it's difficult not to, but no. you still manage to look at this objectively and look at the individual exactly. case. Exactly. So mm. the um, we have to always remember that the the person who committed the crime mm. is not the place where they work. Yeah. Right. So, but in the case of United States it's military, admirable. though. We have se over seven decades, 70 years of crimes mm -hmm. which have been not addressed properly. Mm -hmm. That is also not good in harboring rapists sure. for sending them back. Mm -hmm. But uh, yes, a former US military serviceman did help him. Um, so amazing. in 20, almost 20 years mm -hmm. I've been doing this advocacy, grassroots uh, activist. I would say 2% could be false claims and mm. at the moment in 20 years one case every 10 years we, when I was at the, the press conference a few years ago I remember you I, I think you mentioned that one of the things you were working on at that time were rape crisis centers rape crisis centers and that okay. was six years ago I saw you so since then what has been what has happened since then with the rape press did you did you start them off okay or? so uh i wanted to start these rape crisis centers mm -hmm. in 2002 because mm -hmm. when i was raped there was no rape crisis center mm -hmm. okay so rape, what is it can you define a rape, rape crisis, crisis center? center is a place where uh a person can go to to do dna testing mm -hmm. okay to get um if there is any um like bodily fluids that okay. need to be taken because they will disappear from the body, like in about, it depends on the different the parts of the mm. body, but in 
48 to 72 hours, you're going to lose all the evidence. So you have to be quite quick in, in getting getting the evidence. Okay. It could be from combing the person's hair mm -hmm. to taking body fluid samples from mm -hmm. internally from the body, uh, if it was a male or female. And um, so basically to do these testing, also to check and see if the, the person is safe. Mm -hmm. Uh, and if they have any other injuries that need to be checked because, you know, they might not be injured mm -hmm. in any way. Okay. So in my case, you know, the police were saying to me, you have to show us where you're hurt, you yeah. know. I mean, I don't know yeah. what That's kind so of movies that yeah. they had been yeah. Yeah. watching or what kind of myths that they had inside of their mm. head. But a person does not have to be mm. injured. Yeah. So... Yeah. Um, but, but it basically, to a common thing though, because I, uh, I think I mentioned to you before, one of my friends uh, witnessed um, if, uh, another friend, you know, falling off the roof and died. Uh, mm -hmm. He fell off the roof of a building and died, and uh, he was the only witness there. Uh, and the police, they made him repeat over and over again, like twenty times. Mm -hmm. And while he was repeating, I mean, it's so traumatizing. It just happened a few hours before, and then he had to. You know, reenact the whole thing, and they were laughing. They were having a little giggle oh, yes, in the they, corner. They did too. And then like, ah, oh, oh, sorry, we didn't see that. Can you do that one more time? And it was almost like it was deliberate. Like, I mean, I'm, they yeah, did I, the same to me. I had to after of... I was raped. They made me do reenactment mm. of the crime through photos, mm. which meant that they wanted me to get into the positions that I had been raped with another policeman. And that's even more traumatizing. Crazy. Can you imagine that? No. That, oh, is, oh, that's, that is barbaric. That's horrible. Um, I said to them, I'm, I'm not doing it. I'm mm. not going to get in those photos. Yeah, of course. And so they made me direct my own rape. And I have two, a policeman and a police that's officer, direct. women. Yes. And every, every mm. pose of the rape and, and show them a photograph of what to do. Um, I mean, on the one side, you understand as you mentioned with these uh these rape crisis centers the the, the point that uh, you try to, to to collect evidence as quickly as possible so you understand that this needs to be done quickly after the crime that's right. one thing but then there's also a certain psychology a way that you need to appro approach it and you need to make sure as you said that the person is feeling safe and things like this so you don't just ask them to direct their own rape that's uh, this, that's, this that's just, ludicrous yes it is yeah, i was traumatized by the of course, police of course, yeah. and to me i call that the second rape against me because everything they did was against my will mm. everything um this is what drove you of course the event as well but this drove you to to, to, to make changes places. with the police as so well yeah. you were the first person to start these rape crisis centers in japan right yeah to start this movement um i was even people would, would tell me, why do you hate Japan so much? And I said, well, I don't hate Japan. I just think that we need to have 24-hour rape crisis centers mm -hmm. in Japan. Mm -hmm. And I uh, did a lot of campaigning, going to the government, speaking with the governments, and doing a lot of press conferences for the last mm -hmm. 20 years. But now Japan is starting to make these rape crisis centers. That's great. But see, now, I'm, well? now mm -hmm. I am telling, I have a different plan now to mm -hmm. that. Mm. Are they working well, the ones that are... No, they're not working very okay. well. What's because the, I the went in to check, uh, I went to see what what did their rape test kits look like. Mm. They did not even, I, I just looked at it and I said, where is your blood sample mm. test kit here? Where is that? You don't even have that there. See, the reason why they needed to have that is if the um, the person who had been raped had, they they might look like they had been drinking too much or something, mm. but actually they could have been drugged. Mm -hmm. So you need to do blood tests on the person mm. to see, okay. to find out if there you know, what's, go what's going on okay. with the person. Okay. So those tests were not even in there. It's still kind of in, in immature stages, naturally, right? They're in immature stages. Okay, but that's, that's the, the point that I would just like to tell you mm. is that mm. is maintenance. Mm -hmm. So I've changed my stance. Mm. You know, 20 years ago, I was saying, let's make 25 way crisis centers. Mm. But now I don't think that's the answer. Okay. So, so while everybody's busy, like, yeah, we're going to make these 25 way crisis yeah. centers. I don't think maintenance is the answer. Yeah. The so, answer is prevention. Yeah. Mm. So we have to, you can't just like, I wanted to have 25 way crisis center every, all over Japan. Yeah. But now I think that's, that's we still do need that. Mm. But the answer is not maintenance, but prevention mm. to stop people from going into those centers in the first place. Yeah. Mm. 
And so in Japan, it's nobody wants situation. to. Yeah, of it's, course. Mm. And so nobody mm. wants to talk about that. So I did um, mm. major surveys, went into like five different universities, and and uh, and basically, Japan has the same rate of the sexual assault and sexual abuse than as everywhere else around the world. Really. Yeah, it's the same. I mean, all places are different, right? It's not going to be the same level. About one in five. Really? But then this, I don't know, we don't have uh, statistics on this. Maybe you do. But do you know if there's um, also a different way to approach, you know, victims of uh, sexual assault um, that's done in Japan versus other countries like the US or uh, Mm. Australia or other countries that you've Mm. had to to be an activist in? Right. So uh, basically, if somebody comes to you who has been traumatized in some way, mm-hmm. as human beings, what would we do? That's the only thing we need to just mm-hmm. don't think about. Mm-hmm. And um, I came up in this book here, which I wrote in 2007, I came out with the JAT system, J-A-T. Mm-hmm. And it's pretty simple, it's just us. That what does it stand for, J-A-T? Just Ask just them. ask them. <laughs> I just missed that. <laughs> she just gave you the answer. <laughs> just <laughs> just ask them. Right? Profound. Okay. What does it mean? Yes, just sorry. ask okay. them. Okay, I see, I see. Yeah. Just ask yeah. them because, you know, they know what they need. Mm. For example, in my case, if they'd asked me, what is it that we can do for you right now? Well, they knew, mm. but I would say I needed underwear. Mm. <laughs> or, um, but in the police station that I was held in, I could see that there was, you know, a, a telephone right in front of me. So I said, can I use the telephone, please? And I called it, and I called another police station. I said, I need help. I'm being held wow. in this police station. No and way. they ripped the phone out of my hands. Are you serious? Yeah, so, you were so frustrated with the way they were treating you, right? Uh, frustrated? It was um, a it's human really rights separate. violation yeah. against yeah. me. Yeah. yeah. I, it could be considered an act of torture. Um, when 60 Minutes came uh, over to um, Japan to film me, mm-hmm. we actually did go back to that police mm-hmm. station and they went in there and uh, the uh, Yokosuka police station was, get out of here, you need to respect this police station. Mm-hmm. And uh, the um, main reporter, he said, excuse me, but that's what we need to be asking you, why don't you respect her? Mm-hmm. Why, why couldn't you respect her? And so basically, that's the answer to everything, actually, is we need to just start respecting each yeah, other. It's a little bit of empathy as well, yes. right? A little bit of empathy, with respect, just acting yeah. as like real human beings and say, what, what is it that we can do? They actually know, need to know and be yeah. trained to know what they need to do. Yeah. So th- maybe now we get up on, on this topic uh, more about the, what can be done, I guess. Uh, to, uh, if you, it seems like the level of... Um, of let's say of action that is being taken in other countries is probably superior to what's being done currently in Japan to help yeah. victims of rape. So, what can be done basically to in raise the levels terms. in yeah. Japan? In Japan, we are decades um, behind, decades behind in what things that what needs to be done here. Um, but for me, I think education is going to be our best prevention. Mm-hmm. That's being aware of what could happen. Mm-hmm. Now, for many years, I knew that um, of you know, like a drug, for example, called roofies. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. So somebody could put if you're at a at a bar mm-hmm. or something, and somebody put something into your drink because yeah. someone drugged me. Of course, yeah. But I didn't want to tell people about the drug. Because, you know, that could be easily hidden into maybe like a Vicin bottle. They could just put the drops in there, Mm. put it back into their pocket, but no one's going to check it. So, but now Mm. the police are aware of those kind of things. Mm. So they know that they can, they can check the Mm. the person um, who could have committed the crime. But these, there's, there's no drug awareness. Um, And also with the the Me Too movement, as I said, which means different things to different people, is that it's being used in a way that if anybody says Me Too, that is just immediately going to make that man guilty. Mm -hmm. But it's um, guilt, you know, if the person has been shown to be innocent and they keep on saying that he is guilty, Mm -hmm. I mean, this is ruining the lives of people Mm -hmm. by just adding a hashtag to it, Me Too. Mm -hmm. So, um, 
basically what I would like to work on right now, and it should be ready next week, is my new campaign for men. That's what I want to check what you're doing mm -hmm. exactly. This is the awareness campaign for men. The awareness campa mm -hmm. campaign for men, mm -hmm. that if they are victims to, to uh, because, you know, they, women actually feel like ashamed and uh, scared of the ramifications mm. that could happen if they come out to society, right? Yeah. So men are even more scared. Mm. You know, you see, you see it even like on like on Netflix shows or something. You know, um, if someone might be talking to his male friend and then he might start mm. crying and then they'll quickly close the shutters and say, maybe you just need some time to yourself or something. Um, so what would you do if a male friend said that he had been sexual abused? What would you do? You take it it's seriously. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So this is, this is just, it's going to be a simple campaign to just say, mm -hmm. you know, you know, just believe the person of course, and don't yeah. judge them. Mm -hmm. And, um, and that person has actually used, you know, trusted you that much that they're putting their life into your hands, mm -hmm. but to not judge them, believe them, respect them so them. and like yeah. encourage them to mm -hmm. sort of like get some help. Okay. And, um, I would like to, to make that that platform out there yeah. for, for men. What sort of uh, platform would it be on? Is it, um, would it be, a, a, let's say, a, a telephone line that somebody can call? Uh, first of all, I'm going to be making um, brochures mm -hmm. to hand out at, to, to leave at universities mm -hmm. um, and, you know, be telling you, sharing with the media yeah. and, and, and so on. Okay, so. okay. So I know you've been active. It's not just this you've been focused on. You've been focused on a number of things. What you're doing? I know you're doing artwork. Mm -hmm. uh, you're working on um, helping people, uh, helping, shall I say, saving the coral reefs of um, Okinawa, which is the southernmost island of Japan. Right. Um, you know what projects are you doing now? What is ongoing, and um, what, are, what are we looking forward to hearing? Okay. Well, about? there is another. Well, for me, I I think my art therapy, mm -hmm. which I started like 20 years ago, mm -hmm. really helped me. Yeah. Uh, my first paintings that I drew were really dark, um, very, very dark. And it, it kind of like, you could sort of like see the state of state that I was in. And, and, um, and now I, I have one of my pieces is called the, it's the first time I came up with the word empowertarian. Mm -hmm. Um, what does that mean? Empowertarian. So, people would say to me, and here is Catherine Jane Fisher, the rape victim. So that was kind of like my name, Catherine mm. Jane Fisher, the rape victim. Mm. And that's kind of like difficult to put that on a mm. name card, of isn't course, it? Yeah. Catherine Jane Fisher, rape <laughs> victim. And I said, but I'm not, I'm not just a victim. Of course, yeah. You know, I was a victim, then I was a survivor and a thriver, but still, I, I'll never forget the day this lady, I hadn't seen her in a while, and she said, can I get your phone number again? And um, I said, okay, Catherine, rape victim. And I said, you're kidding me. You're kidding me. You're going to put that down mm. on my name? That was like so shocking. <laughs> and I, yeah. I got that all the time. It's ridiculous. Mm. Yeah. That was like my, you... my surname. Yeah. And so I, I heard that again with this group of women. And then I thought, okay, mm. that's it. I'm no longer anyone's victim. Yeah. And I came up with this word empower empower oh okay empower Jerian yeah. so and a power is a person who can empower their own life and the life of others sure. and um, which that's is what you've my, been doing for 20 years yeah, yeah so that's my Instagram how many people name. have you helped I mean do, I'm not the exact number mm. but I know you've you've brought a lot of people out of their shells recluses there's yeah. too many people too like, many people like that shouldn't figure, hundreds of people right yes hundreds yeah. and I get um, women Emails from people, men as well, kids, children, yeah, children, uh, children who have actually wouldn't leave the house. They get on planes to come and meet me. Mm. It's that's uh, that's powerful. Yeah. It is powerful. Yeah. So um, you know, there's so many times that you just want to give up. Mm -hmm. um, but even like with this one dollar, okay, when this one dollar came from the trust fund, it was you know the paper came. Mm -hmm. And I received it, I opened it up, and I, I remember thinking, at that same time, there was another woman who was missing in Okinawa. She, she went missing. Mm. And I, I knew she's dead. 
And it worked out that um, a former U.S. military serviceman had actually kidnapped her. She was just walking down the street. He just hit her, kidnapped her. He killed her, mm. raped her, and stuffed her in a suitcase and left her in the forest. And I thought, what has changed? Mm. Mm. They still hadn't make, made the 24-hour rape crisis centers. There was still no uh, prevention campaigns or campaigns. I've, I've been writing to the United Nations, well, since in 2007, and we actually did get a reply from the United Nations uh, Committee Against Torture, mm. which had been recommending through our organization and other organizations to Japan to do, to do these kind of campaigns. And this is 12 years later, they still have failed to do mm. that. Um, even it, it's, it states here in the, um, this is the uh, Convention Against Torture, uh, Committee Against Torture for the 38th session mm -hmm. for Geneva in 2007. It said the committee regrets, however, that the report from the Japanese government due in July 2000 was submitted over five years late. Mm. So Japan was even five years late in replying to the United Nations. Mm -hmm. So back then, I mean, nothing was taken seriously about, um, you know, these kinds these of things. accusations. And, but, right. okay, sorry, this, this might be something we should have asked as well and touched upon at the beginning, but all of these, you know, cases have been brought up to the U.S. military and um, also the bases in Okinawa and probably in other areas in Japan. What is being done? What is what sort of messages are coming out of those mm. bases for you know? Because this has been going on since the forties. Is there any sort of introspection or clean up? That's, you know, operations that's been going on. Do you know of anything? Hmm. Well, there's one thing. I had a meeting with the uh, the Japanese government. Probably, I think, it was in the last two, six months or so. And they said, thank you, because of you, the crimes have decreased. Mm -hmm. But, you know, there is a zero tolerance policy, which is it, which has been put in place by the American military. So zero means zero policy. Mm -hmm. It sure. doesn't mean mm -hmm. hundreds and thousands of crimes. Mm -hmm. So um, if we look at the data, there was, a, um, there was, since 1952 to 2017, there were, 210,000 cases excuse me of um, of different kinds of crimes and accidents that have happened in Japan by the United States military by of military. what number if that were the rape crimes I, I don't know no, the, yeah, the number, the, exact number. But, you, but you see but yeah. even one is one too many yeah, yeah just going back to the, the you know that you said that Japan has as many rape cases as other countries right of course, you're you're the person. You're the expert on this. You've been looking into this. You spent years of your life doing this. From us, from a foreigners like us, we see Japan as a lovely place, as a place with no crime. Um, you know, we, we, there's nothing. Is that you know, people don't steal money. Um, your your items are returned. You know, hmm. you're on the train. Yeah. The worst thing we'll see is on occasion you'll see a strange person doing something on the train, right? Something inappropriate. So. How, where are these are these cases happening? Because hmm. they're not visible. Whereas in, in England or America, there'd be more eyewitness accounts of things happening like that, right? And you feel more scared as well, like walking through the park. But in Japan, there's no fear like that. So where would these? Well, actually, a reporter happen? asked me that recently. Mm -hmm. uh, so tell me, what do you think about Japan? Why are all these crimes happening? Yeah. Um, Japan really does have great respect for each other mm. in Japan. Yeah. But there is that respect that I'm not going to say anything because then I, my family is not going to be respected. Mm. So people are becoming silent because not only are they scared to, mm. but also there is a really strong sense of disrespect that they know due to the stigma of society here. Yeah. Mm. So there is a lot of incest going on. The cover of this book actually, as I said, she was raped by her father mm. from age six or stepfather. Mm. Um, little children who are being sexually um, abused by their teachers, mm -hmm. you know, mentally challenged children. Um, and in back in the day, though, there's like curtains at the back of the the classrooms where mm -hmm. the the male teacher will change the diapers of the students. And in that case, he had actually, you know, raped the, one of one of the little girls. Mm -hmm. 
but they, you know, they would just put them into another school. Sure. So they don't have background checks. Mm. And everything is just like kept under the carpet. Mm. And so here, the United States military crimes that happened since the 1970s, when I gave my intervention in mm. the United Nations in Geneva uh, last month, you could have heard a pin drop because nobody had known had known about all of these crimes. Mm -hmm. And so how could 70 years of crimes be kept, you know, secret to the world for mm. so long? Yeah. Hence. Nobody, you know, and, and, mm. and because it happened in Okinawa, mm. basically a lot of the crimes happen in Okinawa, but also in Tokyo too. Yeah. Yeah. It's just mm. that it's not getting into the media. Yeah. Yeah. For example, the, the right, right. So for yeah. example, yeah. after I was raped in the same town, mm. I'm sure you don't even know that there was a lady who was, she was a bus, she cleaned buses. Mm -hmm. She was on her way to work and a US military guy, same base where the guy who raped me was. Mm. Uh, he asked her for some money because he wanted to continue drinking that morning. Mm. She didn't give him any, so he beat her to death. But the, the man who was the husband, you know, of this, this woman. This is in Okinawa, right? No, this is oh, okay. in this Yokosuka. Is in case, this okay, is here. Sorry, sorry. This, is, case, yeah. this is just a few years after mm. I was raped. Same mm. place. Um, just, just right close where I was raped. Mm. So they actually, the police came and got the husband, put him up against the wall mm. and said, we know you killed your wife. So he would have been in prison if they didn't find the surveillance cameras. Mm. Uh, the surveillance footage from sure. the cameras and so and he confessed to me he said to me um, he said I remember how scared I was when I was in that police station mm. he said and you're a woman I know you must have been even more scared being held there for 13 hours so uh, I, I'm still traumatized of by course. that but I have to tell you um, mm. I, I gave a um, one of my art exhibitions and after that, we had a small party. And, you know, I get followed by secret police and police and things like that here in Japan mm. because of breaking the silence, um, which my lawyers have the footage and everything. So, um, and this guy comes up to me and he said, I read your book. He said, I'm a policeman. I'm like, oh, no, not again. Why have I got another policeman coming? And he said, I just want to say sorry to you. And I said, why? And he said, because... I did the same thing to other women back in the day too. And he said, what happened to you is true. And he said, can you ever forgive us Japanese for what we did to you? And he started crying. Why? He started crying. Did you say what? But he did just, he just that? didn't, I, I guess after he read my book, he, if he would have the courage to come forward and say, I would have been, if you know, he but he, we're talking. We're whole. talking about twenty. You know, about twenty years ago, yeah. sure, when they were so. doing this. So he would lose his job. Mm. But uh, okay. the power in that, though, mm. was that I also took a case against the the Japanese police for what they did to me. And it was I for the Japanese police. I lost that case because they wouldn't take any of my. Um, the positions or? no like the evidence that I had okay. I mean they said that they let me go earlier than they said that they did yeah. sure. but I had like x-rays which says that I'm still at the hospital at, at 12 o'clock that day mm. and they said no we let her go home early it's like how can you dispute video of you know x-rays that have times on them um, so that was that was okay. just ridiculous but um, big mess yeah <laughs> But the other court cases I did were in all of those, but against the Japanese police. But um, that was this, the day that I lost that case was the day seven years later that a Japanese policeman said sorry to me and mm. was in tears. So maybe there was some justice in that that, that, that came, yeah, came and back. Yeah, came forward, right? There must be many. Yeah, but it was the same there. day. Sure. Yeah. Okay. yeah, because this also shows that the work you've done does not go unnoticed. Right. Even though, you know, the United States military might not be sending messages out, you know, say we'll, or the Japanese government might not say, you know, we will hunt you down if you run away from the country. Mm. At least they know there was one woman yeah. who did that yeah. and that um, any great victims, male or female that come to us, we will help them. 
Mm-hmm. Really yeah. helped him. Yeah. And um, and and also lastly, I just want to say, you know, the Me Too movement. They have a, another hashtag called Men Too as well. Mm-hmm. But I have a hashtag which is uh, Strong Men Protect and Respect. Okay. What is what is your okay your final message to, to okay. give to to the well, viewers there? Okay. Well, strong men do <laughs> protect people mm-hmm. and respect people, and there are so many men out there that that are you know protectors mm. of us mm. and if we are you know other people are doing like men are trash or i hate men or or using the me too movement in in a way which is detrimental to society what is the point of that mm. can you imagine if we had only 100 people in the world and one person was a rape victim or one person was illiterate, or one person didn't have a home, do you think people would start helping each other a little bit more? Well, yeah, there's only 100, right? Because there's only 100 of us. So, and we, can we just like start from our own community mm-hmm. and like just start helping people in your immediate community? And start looking at things objectively. It's, you're right, you know, exactly. By individual cases, right? Yeah, um, just start helping people, mm-hmm. um, starting the communication, because right now I'm focusing on a lot of young people that really, they were, the Me Too movement mm-hmm. is is not actually helping people in Japan because, you know, or of, around the world, as we said before, because you, the, a date might... A bad date, or yeah. someone looking at you uh, funny and... I said, okay, okay Me Too, or something yeah, exactly, like that. Exactly. And that was not the reason why the, the founder of that movement started that yeah. so for me I have the um, oh actually when I was at Yale University mm-hmm. as well I was giving a speech there and there was uh, actually quite a few women that came out and said that they were victims too mm. but I have another hashtag which I thought was brilliant and I think the buck stops here and you know what that means right it means no more no. So that's, and, and also the other 60 um, minutes. What is that exactly representing in this case? The, the buck stops here. That means like, let's stop this from happening. So for example, in my mosque, in my church, in my community, you know, I'm going to be the person that's going to make sure that everyone's okay mm-hmm. and protect people, um, do good things. You know, um, if you see other men who are being terrible to women, mm-hmm. then just call them out. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, just start helping each other, starting the communication agree. with people, yeah, and agree. that's also mm-hmm. something uh, that I'm doing right now. Great. Is starting the communication, opening these channels that people can have more conversations with each other. Yeah, okay, great, great. So, what an open dialogue. Perfect. Well, we, well we, wish, we wish you the best of luck. Yeah. yeah. Thank you for all your work so far, all the people you helped. Yeah. Thanks. And thanks for coming on today. Okay, yeah. backstops here. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, thanks. Thanks.